Hey everybody, what's up? It's Ryan Gruss from the Loop Loft, and I'm back for another video tutorial. Uh, today we're looking at using multi-track drums, live multi-track drums, inside of Ableton. Uh, some of my past videos I've been using uh, Logic and Reason um, for mixing and arranging the drums, and today we're going to take a good look at uh, Ableton and uh, see what possibilities uh, are available to us inside of that. Um, so first I'll show you how I like to get started um, setting up my session in Ableton when using uh, these multi-track drum sessions. And the session I'm using today is the Felt and Wires multi-track drum session uh, from the Loop Loft. Um, as you can see here in the left-hand uh, column, we're looking inside the session folders, um, and it's all organized by you know the intros and the verses. And then if you open up the subfolders, you'll find the individual um, drum tracks uh, for each of those different grooves. Um, so to get ready to load those in, um, the first thing I like to do, which I've already done, is to name each individual track um, so it corresponds to the multi-track uh, drum part that's going to be loaded. So um, the first thing you want to do is, obviously on uh, channel one, just follow the track names uh, or instrument names that are listed in the multi-track. So um, for one is kick, two snare, three, Tom, and so on. Um, and then you'll see I've also set up uh, extra channels for the percussion, um, which is in the percussion overdubs folder. Um, so we have an African shaker and an egg shaker and tambourine. Um, so you'll see I've already prepped uh, 10 channels that are uh, ready to go. Um, and you can just start dropping in uh, the arrangement that way. Um, and I've also gone ahead and sort of set up a template of song parts um, so once we have the multi-track drums in, um, we can use Ableton to quickly launch the different scenes and move around and arrange um, on the fly uh, the drum part. So I can just hit record, start off with the intro, into the verse, chorus, uh, and so on to uh, build the song exactly how I want. Um, so now that we've got all that laid out, um, I'll start and show you the process of bringing in the drum tracks. So. Uh, the first part of the song, we obviously want an intro, so I'm going to go into my intro folder, um, and we'll see I have some different options here, mallet, toms, uh, brush and hi-hat, um, and I can listen to each preview track here uh, with this little wave file that exists right outside each folder. So let's take a listen. So kind of a mellow hi-hat brush groove. Um, kind of a more tribal tom-tom uh, -tom groove, which, which I'm digging. So, since I like that, let's stop that. Um, I'm going to open up the tracks folder and start dragging in um, each individual element into the appropriate channel. So I'm going to cut forward and show you uh, the entire session once all the parts are loaded in. Wow, look at those pretty colors. All right, so now we've got all the tracks loaded in. Um, corresponding to the different uh, arrangement sections of the song. And uh, I've color-coded everything uh, just because I'm anal. And I like to see uh, just, you know, when I'm mixing quickly and I have all the tracks open, uh, there's a certain color code I tend to use um, for each instrument. Um, so that's why everything is a certain color on each track. Um, and I've also color-coded um, the different sections of the song. So when I'm going through and recording this uh, in live by triggering the different scenes, um, it's a little easier to know, uh, you know, I, the fills are pretty easy to uh, identify in a hot pink um, bridge. You know, I like green for the chorus. You can do whatever you want. Um, but that's sort of my, my uh, method to my madness. Um, so nothing is mixed yet. We just drop these in. Um, all the faders are at zero dB. So it's probably going to be a little rough, which is why they call it a rough mix. Um, so what I like to do is I look for a, a section of the song where everything uh, is being played so I can kind of mix off of that. Um, if I'm going just for a, you know, a quick rough mix, I'll come back later and fine tune that. But here in the chorus two section, um, you'll notice I have a one and a two of everything. And the one usually is a little lighter, less percussion, less built up. And then the two is kind of a second half of a verse or a second half of a, a, second half of a chorus where I add some more uh, percussion or the groove might have some more ghost notes and be a little busier um, to help it propel the song forward. So chorus two, um, we can see has everything loaded up. Um, so let's load or trigger that scene and uh, we'll start just doing a really quick rough mix with that. 
So, wow, you can hear everything's loud, especially the percussion. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just start bringing that stuff down. A little better, and then I'm going to go in and solo. And uh, I'm going to start panning some stuff really quick, just to give us a little stereo image. Um, too much tambourine. Um, and you'll also notice I've set up an effect send uh, uh, on the A effect. Um, to just have uh, some drum reverb in there to help. Uh, you can hear it. Uh, just to kind of give a little more ambience and uh, fill things out. Um, check out the kick drum. I'm just going to pull way back on the drums in general. Snare drum. You can, you'll notice it's, the snare drum's off. Um, a lot of the song is sort of a uh, Art Blakey, Elvin Jones, you know, timpani mallet meets... Uh, a uh, Jim Keltner uh, kind of uh, organic uh, drum folky vibe, if that makes any sense. Um, but that's what I was going for on this session. So that's why uh, snares are off and there's a lot of tom and, and brush interplay in the songs. Here's the high tom. I like to pan these a little bit. Um, I've mentioned in previous videos I like, I like to pan as a drummer, as I would hear it sitting at the drums, because I'm a drummer. I like to think so. So that is to the left, floor tom, pan it to the right. And again, this is all very rough. Uh, overhead left, so that should go pretty hard left. Overhead right, let's go pretty hard right on that. And bring these down to you. All right, so all together. Percussion's still pretty high. That voodoo drum is too much. And still too much percussion. Usually I find I bring the percussion down a fairly extreme amount compared to the rest of the kit just because you know it's kind of like salt and pepper uh, if that makes any sense you don't want to ruin your entree by putting too much on or insult the chef so don't insult me um, so that sounds pretty good so now I've got a rough mix and I've got my uh, arrangement uh, set up, you know, by, by clips. So let's um, record a take. So I'm just going to use the intros, the verses, the chorus, and the fills, and just put something together. Um, so let's do it. Let's go into the intro. And again, that tambourine's not too quiet. And then build it up, the second half of the intro. Now we're going to go into a verse groove. You know, something a little more mellow with uh, the brushes on the snare. Now a second half of a verse. It's the first verse, so it might be shorter than the second verse. And then maybe a fill into a chorus. So that tom groove that we had going earlier. Again, we're going to fine tune the mix later in the second half of the chorus. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to jump straight into the bridge. Sort of just a snare breakdown into the second bridge. Some more elements coming in. And then a big fill. Maybe kind of an extended bridge back into a chorus. And 
And so that's basically how I get started um, using live in the multi-tracks. Uh, definitely an easier way to arrange your songs than um, constantly copying and pasting and dragging files around. Um, I really love the ability to be able to kind of not, you know, in a non-linear fashion, bounce around um, from the bridges to the choruses to the verses um, just by triggering the scenes. Um, and if we tab over and look at the session, you'll see it's kind of done all that work for us that, you know, in Pro Tools or Logic um, would be a lot of manually, you know, copying and, and dragging and pasting, which we can still do in this arrangement view, but uh, Live sort of does that all for us uh, from the session view, which is great. So usually the next step I like to do uh, before adding other instruments and overdubbing um, once I have my, my drum track down is uh, just to group all of the drum and percussion tracks together. Um, basically just to kind of clean up your session so you're not staring at 10 open tracks. Um, all you need to do is select all uh, after clicking on one of the tracks and uh, command G, I believe. Um, so now you'll see it's sort of like a drum rack where um, they're all kind of folded together and you uh, basically have one group track where you can control the volume of your entire uh, drum session together. So that's a quick overview of how I like to work with multi-track drums inside of Ableton. Um, I'm normally not a big fan of you know, programming or using uh, MIDI drums, um, so I find that this gives you the, the feel, the human feel of a real drummer, um, but still the flexibility of uh, you know, have a, having everything cut up in clips and bouncing around in an arrangement um, and the flexibility of EQing and compressing, which I, I'll get to in another video, um, of each single instrument. Um, so you have, you know, like the control that you would with a drum rack with a MIDI groove, um, but you get a human drummer uh, behind the kit uh, playing the song for you. So it's kind of a best of both worlds thing. Um, so hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'll be posting uh, the template that I set up for the session um, on the loop loft. So if you happen to have uh, the Felton Wires uh, multi-track sessions, um, you can use the template I used today for the video and uh, start dragging and dropping in the files yourself. Um, and hopefully this, this will be a good uh, starting point uh, for your next track. So uh, until next time, uh, I'll see you soon. All right, take care.